Praise the Lord. I thank God for the privilege to stand before the prophet of God. Amen. Amen. First, I want to thank the district pastor for this honor and the presidency, as well as the local executives for their support and being here with us today. If you permit me, I want to remove my nose mask. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> Shall we close our eyes and pray? Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. Come now, come down. Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. child who is three years can recite but it is the fundamental of our faith and is the reason why we have gathered here today shall we read john chapter 16 3 verse 16 to 17 the bible says for this is the way god loved the world he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life for god did not send his son into the world to condemn it but to save the world through him amen god loved the world the world god loved it the world is decaying very fast we are at a pace 
that even a child knows that very soon Jesus will be descending. But how sure, how ready are you? Do you still believe that for God so loved the world? We are faced with a lot of difficult situations, pandemics, earthquakes, high divorce rates, volcanoes, all kinds of troubles that tells us that the world is not a good place to live in. But God loved the world. This is a profound mystery. Why will God choose to love such a world? A world that is so destructive. A world that has nothing good to offer. But God loved the world. Luther said, John 3.16 is the heart of the Bible. The heart of the Bible is John 3.16. John 3.16 actually sums up the whole gospel. It tells us who God is. And what a price he paid so that you can sit under his feet this afternoon. God loves the world. Beloved, God loves you. No matter your situation, no matter what you are going through, Jesus and God, they love you. And they love you so much that they are even willing to offer such a great price just for you. Even if you were the only person in this life, God will so send his son to die for you because God loves you. We are wallowing so much in sin. We are so far away from God even though we sit under his feet. But this morning, I want to tell you, no matter the magnitude of your sin, no matter the depth which you are fallen, there is salvation in this house for you. There is salvation in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that God loved the world. He loved you despite all your iniquities. He loved you despite all the difficult things that you have gone through. Even at the time that you thought it is enough, let me give up. God was still there. His love held you and he is still holding you until today. So God loves you. I want to tell you, those of us watching on YouTube, those of us watching on Zoom, that God loves you. That is why he sent his only son to die for you. God paid the greatest price a songwriter said that he paid a debt that he did not owe. Why would a man do such a thing? Why would a man do such a thing? Pay a price that he did not even, he is not supposed to even pay for it. He paid for it. John referred to the world. If you read the book of John, Anytime John is talking about the world, he's talking about these evil things that we do, the sinful things that we do, the character that we portray that do not honor God. But he said that despite all our gossip, despite all our backsliding, despite all our anger and pain, God still loved us. As human beings, what do you love? Everybody in this room wants beautiful things. Everybody. There is nobody in this room that will say that I want to go through pain. There is nobody in this room. Everybody in this room wants a good car, wants a big house, wants all the beautiful things in the world. But God chose the most ugliest thing in the world. Human beings, we want all the good things. So if somebody can pay such a price for you, 
not just for this life, but for eternity, that you know that that person truly loves you. Many of us, you have met people that told you they loved you. But where are they today? How many of us here married our first boyfriend or girlfriend? You see, they told you all the beautiful things they want to tell you. I love you. I will die for you. I will do this for you. But where are they today? But God, when he said he loves you, he loves you. No matter who you are. And this morning, I want to tell you that there is salvation for anybody that is wallowing in sin. Anybody that is straying away from God. That Jesus came to this life to save mankind. Jesus came to this life to save you so that you can have eternity. There are some people like you. They are sitting in, you know, somewhere. The last time I remember I went to Vancouver. I, went, I passed a place that I was shocked to the bone. I, I, I asked myself, so this place exists. We smokers, cocaine dealers, you see their skin pierced with needles. Every part of you see that these people need something. They need life. But you are privileged to be here because God chose you from the foundation of this world. And you are here because God loves you. He gave his only son, the double pro. How many of us in this room can give one of our child as an offering? How many of us would be willing to do that? Even when you are driving and somebody just scratch your car, see how angry you become. Imagine your son giving your son as an offering to the Lord. But God decided that he would give his only begotten son. He gave it, he gave him up for you. There is a story in uh, Genesis chapter 34. Jacob had only one daughter. And surprisingly, somebody who is from a royal home felt he was too in love to rape the girl. One daughter. And the brother said that this thing that this man have done, we will not let it go. You see how retaliatory we are, how vindictive we are when somebody takes something that belongs to us. But God offered his only begotten son. The Bible stressed that it was his only begotten son for you. The people of Israel had that privilege of meeting Jesus. So the Bible says in Romans chapter 5 verse 8 that God demonstrates his love for you whilst you were yet sinners. For me, whilst I was wallowing deep in sin, God demonstrated his love for me. God demonstrated his love for you who is watching us where, where you think that it is enough I can't face tomorrow I can't do it anymore God demonstrated his love for you even whilst you are still at the point of destruction God still loves you and he's calling you today that come there is life come there is hope come there is salvation in Jesus there is only one name by which a man can be saved. That is the name of Jesus. The Bible says in John chapter 15 verse 13. Can you read that? John 15 verse 13. It says that greater love has no one than this. Greater love has no one than this. That a man should lay down his life for his friend. How many of us here can lay down our lives for somebody we call a friend? Even your boyfriend left you. Your ex-boyfriend left you. They left you. 
But God, Christ Jesus, laid down his life for you. Beloved, do not give up yet. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. Don't lose focus. Because there is salvation in the name of Jesus. There is a song that says that he was despised. Despised and rejected. If you read Isaiah, the Bible says that he had no form. You know, he was beating the poor that this man, this handsome man, had no form. But he said, I will do it for you. It's not for anybody, it's for you. So that you can enjoy eternal life. After all the things we have gotten in this life, if you lose your life, so that's the you are miserable. Your life is miserable. The songwriter said that Ababawa, eh? When you die, I was in 40 years, eh? And any they will be playing around you. Those animals that you step on every day you walk out, they will be playing with your body. Beautiful lady, handsome man. Eh? The ant will be playing with your body. Today you think that you are on top of the world. But die and see. I love the song. That Elder Frank always sings. That man of Calvary oh, has won my heart for me. He died to set me free. Oh, that man of Calvary, he died to set you free. You were meant for death. You should have remained in a village somewhere in Ghana, but God brought you here. He changed your destiny. He changed your face. So that you can enjoy the goodies of life. But after all this, if you don't make it to heaven, that man, that man of Calvary, imagine a man nailed to the cross just for you. You are wallowing in sin, doing all kinds of things. You may think that, as for me, I don't fornicate. As for me, I don't commit adultery. What about the gossip? What about the small, small lies that you tell? What about them? You think that if Jesus had come today, you go. He died to set us free. So that we will have salvation. Let's go to Luke chapter 16 verse 19. It's the story of the rich man and Lazarus. We have studied this in our Bible discussion. The Bible says there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived a luxurious every day, in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sore, and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's day. So, this is not a real story. It is, I think, one of the parables. So, the Bible is telling us that there was a rich man. He had everything. Just like you have everything. You have reached the level that you want to go, and you feel you are comfortable. But there was another man who was always begging at his gates, covered with sore. The Bible says that when the rich man died, he went to hell. 
One interesting thing the Bible said was that when Lazarus died, angels came to pick him up. Who will be picking you up when you die? Who will be picking you up? Who will come and say, let's go when you die? Last week we were in the car when we were saying that TV Joshua is dead. I'm not sure whether it is true or not. I don't normally do those kind of stories. But if he is dead, the question that is that matters most is where is he going? He healed the sick, he raised the dead, he did all kinds of miracles. But where would he go when he died? It is a big question. That every one of us must ponder over. Yesterday, in the night, I was sitting with my wife. I started to scroll through Facebook around 12 a.m. And I read that a colleague who had the same scholarship as mine came abroad, studied. His wife also did her PhD. And this man, just 39 years old, is dead. In fact, yesterday night, I couldn't sleep. I was shocked to the core. This guy published a paper just last month on the 8th and, and posted it on Facebook that you can cite my work. It is fresh from the oven. But today, that guy is not alive. 39 years. You think you are 18 years and you remain that forever. Even 12 years people are dying. The guy is dead. I was shocked. I could not even sleep. I was, I could eat. So this can happen to me. In your prime, you have children, you have a wife, and then you are gone. Where are you going to spend the rest of your life? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for you. So that when you die, after your beautiful house, after your beautiful clothes, when you die, you will still have a better place. There is a place that we are going to better than this place. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 14 that in my father's house, there are many mansions. You have two, three bedrooms and you feel you are on top of the world. In my father's house, there are many mansions. There are many mansions. A better place. A place that we must long to go to. How many years are we going to spend here? Maximum 100 years, if you are lucky. 100 years. But there is eternity waiting for you. All the things that we are chasing after, running after, looking for. Beloved, these things, Bible says, I don't know how they say it. Aye vanity, aye niema ufa nyashi, niema na ye preno. People have come, they've gotten the British passport. Didn't they die? Some people did all kinds of things, went through all kinds of pain just to get it, but they died. But there is a passport for you, there is a passport for your soul that when you die today, you will have it only for yourself and it's for eternity. The Bible says that the rich man looked down. He didn't ask for a bottle of water. He didn't ask for a glass of water. He asked for just somebody to dip his hand in water to quench his thirst. It's 25 degrees and we are feeling hot already. Go there. Go to hell. And you see how hot hell is. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, the Bible says that for we know that if this earthly tent, you see, I like this word so much, earthly tent. All those people who are enjoying summer, they are in the mountain somewhere in a tent. This earthly tent. Eh? The Bible says that we live in. He didn't call it even a house. A house can stay for 100 years. Okay? But a tent. Summer lasts for how many months? Three months maximum. Three months. So it means that even if you go to the mountains and put up your tent over there, after three months, you have to come back home. So this tent that you are living in, that you are putting so much on, spending so much on, the Bible says that 
when it is destroyed, we have a building, a building, a beautiful building from God. And that is what God is after, your soul. That is the building that will never be destroyed. He said that it is an eternal house. Eternal house. There is an eternal house living in a tent. And you are so much concerned about the tent, forgetting that there is a house inside you. That is better than this tent. Why are you so worried about what people say about you? The Bible says that Jesus Christ even endured the contradictions of men. Men said all kinds of things. Even his own home, his own people said that this guy probably is mad. What did they not say about him? Then I am come for you soon. What are now? How? Like who drink? Who have? And I'm in the way. And I'm in your way. And I'm a person. Do you know that whether when you leave this room, you will get to your house? You don't even know. So we don't have any guarantee that tomorrow is ours. But we only have one guarantee that eternity is for us. That one we know. We are sure of it. Some people say there is no hell. Go to Sodom and ask them what happened to them. Go to Noah and ask Noah what happened when the rain fell. So if God this same God who so loved the world was capable of raining brims and, and stones and fire on Sodom. I don't know if you can show. Are you better than the people of Sodom? If God could wipe the whole earth with water and save just a few men, you think that God cannot do the same thing to you? Beloved, if you are watching me today, I'm telling you that Jesus Christ came to die for you. He did not come to condemn you because of your sin. Jesus did not come to condemn you because of what you are doing. But he came so that you will have life. That is his focus. The Bible said, I, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. We have life now. But the abundantly is when we go to heaven. Shall we read Matthew chapter 13 verse 44? Matthew 13:44. It says that again the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and hid. And for joy over it he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. A man found a treasure in a field. He sold everything that he had. He sold everything and just went and bought the field. Not because he wanted the field, but he wanted a treasure in the field. What are you ready to give up for Jesus this morning or this afternoon? What are you going to give up for Jesus this afternoon? What are you giving up for eternity? This afternoon, I'm asking you, what are you giving up? What are you holding on to that you need to let go? The Bible says that he bought the, the, the field only because of that treasure. There is a treasure in heaven. What are you giving up? Will you give up your pride for Jesus? Will you give up? Your anger, your pain, will you give them up for Jesus? Your broken heartedness, will you give them up for Jesus? What are you giving up for Jesus? I'm asking, what are you ready to give up for Jesus Christ of Nazareth? That man of Calvary, what are you ready to give up for him? God will judge this world one day. There is a judgment day. A day that has been made even before it comes. 
called Judgment Day. And the Bible says that the sheep will stand on the left, the goat will stand on the right. If you are a sheep, you go to heaven. If you are a goat, there is only one place that you are going and you know there. Jesus Christ is coming back again. It's been 2,000 years. He is not tired. Don't think that he has forgotten that he has to come back. He knows. He wants the message of the gospel to reach the ends of the world. And he's waiting on you and I to do that. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 27, he said that he is coming for a church without stain or wrinkle. Do you have stain? Do you have wrinkles? There is only one blood that can take them away. The blood of Jesus. There is a blood that can wipe away your past and God will not remember it again. There is a blood that can change your destiny. You may be drinking, you may be smoking, you may be doing all kinds of things. But there is a blood. A blood. The blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. The Bible says that blood will speak for you. And that blood will speak salvation for you. He is coming back for a church without spots or wrinkles. You are dressed up beautifully, but there is spots and wrinkles on you. But Jesus can take that away. Yes, you beg you. Oh, but but I can tell you that Jesus is coming again. The signs show that Jesus is coming again. The Bible says that there will be earthquakes. Kingdom will rise against kingdom. Are they not happening today? And you think that he's not coming. Maybe your Jesus will come tomorrow when you don't wake up from your bed. You don't have any sickness, but you can die tomorrow. You don't need to be sick before you can die. Jesus is coming back again. Are you ready? Are you ready for this man who paid a price for you? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And the Bible says that God did not come to condemn this world. He did not come to condemn you. We all have temperamental deficiencies. We all have ethnic deficiencies. We all have tribal deficiencies, racial deficiencies, weaknesses. God is not condemning you because of that. He came to save you. So this afternoon, I'm telling you that there is salvation for you. A sinner who is wallowing deep in sin, far away from the feet of Christ. Jesus is passing your house today. He is passing online today. If you are watching us, Jesus is passing online today. And he wants you to come to him. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, that for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with a voice of the archangel, and with a trumpet call of God. And the dead will rise. If your father is dead, and he was a good Christian. He lived a righteous life. He will rise up again. You will meet him in heaven. But what to you. After listening to this message. After listening to this warning. And you will still decide that you want to go your own way. There is salvation for you. Probably you were born into the church. You have attended Sunday school. Gone to youth service. Joined in miracle. And do and did all kinds of things for God's glory, but you know in your heart, you might have sinned yesterday, you might have sinned before coming to church, but Jesus does not care about what you did before coming to church, He cares about what you are going to do now. The decision that you make now concerns Jesus. The Bible says that for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We are all sin. If you are here, you've not sinned before. Let us know. But we are all sinners. 
and Christ came to die for us. Come to Jesus. Come and try Jesus. If you have tried all kinds of things and they did not work, come and try Jesus. I am giving you the option. If you try Jesus and it doesn't work for you, then you can go. Come and try Jesus. The Bible says, as many as received him, to death he gave them the power to become children of God. The fact that we are sitting here does not mean that we are children of God. Come to Jesus. A soul wallowing in sin, far away from God. Probably you need to rededicate your life to Jesus. You need to come back to Jesus. Make a, a clean start. Clean or wipe away all the things that you have done. And come back to Jesus. There is salvation in this house. Come to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. If you believe that you are going to go to heaven, then you have secured your heaven. How many of us here have house insurance, car insurance, but you have insurance for your soul? When you die today, is there insurance? Some people have made insurance for their children so that when they die, their children can still enjoy the benefit of life. But have you insured your soul? Have you insured your soul? Come to Jesus. There is salvation in the name of Jesus. There is salvation in this house for somebody. You can rededicate your life to Jesus. You can give back your life to Jesus. Maybe you are not confident that you will be going to heaven. You can give it back to Jesus. Leave everything at the foot of the cross. And let God take it away. If you are watching us online. And you need Jesus. This is the time. You've been coming to church every day. But you know. You know. That you don't have salvation. You know. That that joy that we feel. When we are in the presence of God. You don't feel it. You only come because if you don't come. We will call you. Come back to Jesus. Come to Jesus. The Bible says that when this earthly tent that we live in is destroyed, there is a better home. There is a place. That yes, 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 baby, baby, am I am crap. Baby, ah, one for a boy and a cement in see a gold. Look at your gold ring. A year, and I say, oh, man. And there is a place tarred with gold for you. And you are chasing after these things that you leave. Come to Jesus. Shall we close our eyes? If you need Jesus, if you really need Jesus, if you are watching us at home and you need Jesus. You can raise your hand wherever you are. Please, eyes closed. This is a serious moment. It's a very important time. This is the foundation of Christianity. Without this, there is no Christianity. With all eyes closed, you can say this wherever you are. The Lord Jesus, I believe I'm a sinner. And Christ came to die for my sins. But today, I surrender unto you. And I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. And I will walk with him for the rest of my life. Oh sinner, come to Jesus. Mm -hmm.
You can pray wherever you are, silently. If you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, you can pray just at your seat. Jesus is closer to you than even your brother. He's nearer to you than your friend. Just at your seat. He will speak to you. Jesus, speak to us. Jesus, somebody is waiting on you to speak to him or her. Jesus, speak to us. Speak your word into our spirits. Speak your word into our hearts. In the name of Jesus. Speak to us. Pray to Jesus. Tell God all the things that you want to tell him. You can tell him. He will not tell anybody. This is a friend who is able to keep secrets. Tell him all the things that you want to tell somebody that you can't tell. The things that you want to call some a friend and tell, but you can't. Jesus is open to you. He wants to hear. The Bible says that his ears are not heavy to hear our prayers. Neither are by his hands short. Pray wherever you are. We are not going to stand up and shout. But just pray to Jesus. In a solo mood. Pray to Jesus. Tell, talk to him. Talk to him like you are talking to your brother. Talk to him like you are talking to your friend. He loves you. God loves you. He sent his only begotten son for you. Young man, young woman. Jesus loves you. He loves you no matter what you have done. The things that you have done that are so secret that you can't share with anybody. No matter if God loves you. Talk to Jesus. Father, we thank you for what you have done for us today. We thank you that you have saved us. We thank you that you have redeemed us. We thank you that you have changed our destiny from hell to heaven. We thank you for this day, O oh God. We pray for all those who have dedicated their life back to you. And all those who have received you today. That Father, give them strength. Give them strength, Lord. Father, strengthen them, Lord. When they are faced with the challenges of this life, strengthen them. In the name of Jesus. Do not leave us. Do not forsake us. Holy Spirit, abide with us, O God. Abide with us. In the name of Jesus, abide with us. We need you, Holy Spirit. Strengthen us. Take us through until we are in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. I surrender. I surrender. All to be my blessed I surrender all to Jesus. I surrender all to Him. I freely give. I will never love and trust.
Our deacon when speaking says something that was very profound and it touched my heart for us to pray about it. Just one short prayer. He said that there are sheep and there are goats. And he said that the sheep will be on the right hand of God and the goats will be on the left. He said the sheep are going to remain with God in eternity. Remember, he has told us that we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ in the kingdom of God. But he said that the goats, they know where they are going. He didn't say it. And I was touched. God has given us a conviction. God has given us our own will. He has given us our instincts. And right now, right here, you know Deep within your heart. Deep in my heart. I will. Oh, we shall. Deep within your heart, you know if you are a goat and you know where you are going. But he said that our tomorrow is not guaranteed. Our tomorrow is not guaranteed. Yet, our eternity is guaranteed. Hallelujah. Amen. That is so contradictory. Tomorrow is not guaranteed for you. He said you could live here right now. And you might not get to your house. But your eternity is guaranteed. And that guarantee is it for good or is it for bad? We are praying. He said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I want you to pray to God that help me, O oh Lord, to walk in that true path. Help me, O oh Lord, to follow that one way. The route that will lead me to eternal joy. The route that will lead me to eternal salvation and not eternal condemnation. Open your mouth and pray. Lima Sandarabakindoriandi. We are most grateful unto you, our Lord and our God. We thank you, O Lord, for the gift of your Son Jesus Christ. We thank you, O Lord, for his atoning sacrifice on the cross. We thank you, O Lord, for the price he paid on Golgotha for our sins. He told us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Tonight, O Lord, this afternoon we have come to accept and believe in this man. And we pray, Father Lord, that in the rest of our work with you, Help us, O oh Lord, to walk according to your ways. Help us, O oh Lord, to follow Jesus. Help us, O oh Lord, to maintain our trust in him. Help us, O oh Lord, to be disciples of his teachings. Above all, Father Lord, help us to accept his gift of salvation for which we have been saved. We thank you for you are a faithful God. It is your wish that none of us will perish. And so this afternoon, Father Lord, it is our prayer and our hope that in eternity, O oh Lord, we will find perpetual joy in you. In eternity, O oh Lord, we will be binded, O oh Lord, unto thy healing wound. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
He suffered for us. He loves us. We cannot Calvary cross. Who he suffered for us. Oh, he loves me. I cannot. He loves me. I cannot tell why. Oh, he loves me. I cannot tell why. Shall we resume our seats? Oh, we thank you, Lord, for your love. We are eternally grateful. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Beloved, what our brother has received, he has given unto us, and what do we have in return to bless him? God richly bless you, doctor. God bless you. May he multiply his anointing on you. Amen. It's time to take our tithes, and we are going to take a second offering as has been announced from previous weeks. Today is the day that all districts and locals across the area are sending off our father and area head, Apostle James Sam. He and his family have served diligently and it is time for our daddy to take some rest. And as is the culture or principle of our church and as children of God, to not withhold good from those to whom it is due. Let us, from our hearts, our minds, not under volition, give ransomly to a faithful servant of God who has served first and foremost God, his people, and his church. 